guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the recent reads that I rated five stars. Today's video is being sponsored by Scribd, which is a reading service that I've been using for almost four years now. I talked about it on my channel a long time ago. It has literally changed my reading. So Scribd is a huge online service that provides ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and other reading material. It is $8.99 a month and you get to read and listen to an unlimited number of things, which for me is amazing. It is so much cheaper than Audible and I'm the type of person who in any given month I read anywhere from like 10 to 15 audiobooks and so services like Audible just don't work for me and that's why I love Scribd. Like I said, I've been using it for four years. Almost, I would say like 75% of the books I read, I either listened to the audiobook or read the ebook off of Scribd. So the first book I'm going to talk about is actually available on Scribd right now to listen to, and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is one of my favorite books of the year. Obviously, I gave it five stars. And there will be a link in the description where you can go and listen to this right now and start a 30-day free trial of Scribd so you can see just how amazing it is, and I promise you, you'll fall in love with it. So, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is about a woman named Evelyn Hugo, and she is a very famous actress. The story takes place over two timelines and two points of views. The first one is present day, and we follow Monique, a biracial journalist, who found out that the famous and illustrious Evelyn Hugo wants her, and only her, to write her tell-all book. And then the second timeline and narrative is from the point of view of Evelyn Hugo, and we are following her throughout her whole life, from the 50s to the 80s, and she is telling the story of her life and all of her husbands. This book is kind of pitched as like a historical romance, but it is so much more than that. I can't even begin to express how incredible this book is. Evelyn Hugo is so complex. Firstly, she is Cuban-American. Evelyn lost her mother at a very young age, and her body started developing, and men started noticing her. She was trying to leave a bad situation, so she married a man so he could take her away to Los Angeles so she could become an actress. What I love most about Evelyn Hugo is that she is so unapologetic in her actions. She puts herself first, and she has ambitions, and she's willing to do what it takes to get to her goals. Evelyn is also, by sexual and through all of her marriages to seven different men she has had one incredible love with a woman but because of the time and how high profile she was and how she was always in the media she had to hide that from the world it's kind of a deeper message in this book of that time is too short to spend it pretending to be somebody that you're not this is definitely one of those books that I don't think I will ever read anything else like this it is so unique and beautiful and it transcends itself. I cannot wait to reread this and like I said it is available right now to listen to on Scribd and you can go listen to it and find out why I love it so much. The next book I have that I rated five stars is Jane's Deal by Lindsay Fay. This is a sort of retelling, sort of not, of Jane Eyre and the reason I say it's sort of not is because the book Jane Eyre exists in this world and it is Jane Steele's favorite book and throughout this novel she contemplates the similarities between her and Jane Eyre's life but the biggest difference between Jane Eyre and Jane Steele is that Jane Steele is a serial killer. But not just any serial killer, she kills men who are abusive towards women. So this book follows Jane from when she is a child up to her mid to late 20s and throughout her life she's had a lot of hardships. She loses her mother very young. She has a cousin who tries to take advantage of her. She gets sent to a corrupt boarding school. She just keeps experiencing these abusive situations. The writing in this book was really the shining star. The prose are just so lush and dark and captivating. It was everything I love out of a gothic novel. And while this book is pretty dark, there is also a lot of satire and humor laced throughout it because Jane herself is a very witty and sarcastic character. And it would not be a Jane Eyre retelling if there wasn't an amazing romance, which there is. 
I loved the romance in this book. I really liked how it didn't overpower the story. It was there and it was great, but the main focus was on Jane as a character. So I just really can't recommend this book enough. I do want to note that I have not read Jane Eyre. I have seen the movie with Michael Fassbender, who is amazing. But I really don't think you need to have read Jane Eyre to read this. It might make it a little bit more enjoyable, but I know enough of Jane Eyre to be able to get all the references. The next book is The Power by Naomi Alderman. This takes place in a sort of dystopian world. One day, young girls develop this muscle in their collarbone called a skein, and it allows them to produce electricity through their fingertips. So this book poses the question of what would happen if suddenly women were more physically stronger than men. And going into this book, I thought, Okay, yeah, if women take over, it's gonna be amazing, utopia, it's just gonna be everyone loving everybody, and it's gonna be great, women power, hallelujah, but no. Because the driving theme of this book is that unequal power in the hands of anybody will lead to corruption. The first half of this book, as the women are developing this power and things are slowly starting to equalize, I was really excited and I was like, yes, let's go women, cue Beyonce. And then, instead of being equal, they started to flip, and women were way more powerful than men, and it showed just how corrupt any sort of unequal power can turn into. This book really served to hold a mirror up to our own society. I thoroughly enjoyed every second of this. There were some scenes that were just so dark I had to take a moment to collect myself. I also really enjoyed how this book showed different parts of the world. A lot of times I find that in in most of these type of dystopian books that I've read they're just focused on America and I really enjoyed how we got to see different countries responding to this new power. We saw Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Russia, England, and America. Yeah, I really enjoyed seeing how different countries responded to this new power. And then the last book I'm going to talk about in this video is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. This is a young adult fantasy inspired by West Africa and it takes place in a world where there used to be magic. There were these people called magi. The current king figured out a way to get rid of magic and he killed all of the magi. So now that is left are diviners who were magi children who hadn't yet grown into their magic but they all have white hair so they are easily distinguishable from the other people and they are oppressed. They aren't given a lot of rights and they're treated very poorly. A lot of them are used as slaves and so our main character Zele is a diviner. And at the beginning of this book, she has a run-in with the princess, and they both discover a way to restore magic. So Zele, the princess, and Zele's brother go on this quest to restore magic, and they are being hunted down by the prince, who, while he's hunting them down, he's also trying to hide a secret about himself. This book was just amazing. Hands down, this is the closest thing I've read that to reminding me of Avatar The Last Airbender, which I am obsessed with. So if you are a fan of Avatar, I definitely recommend reading this. There is a romance in this book that really reminded me. It was like a combo of Zuko and Katara, and then Kylo Ren and Rey from The Last Jedi when they're having their like mind connection. It was combo that which is everything I've ever wanted. I just loved how incredibly rich and lush this world was. The magic system was super involved and interesting. I also really, really loved Zelle as a main character. And we also follow the points of views of the prince and the princess, who I really enjoyed both of them as well. This was probably one of the best YA fantasies I have read. I just cannot wait for the next book. <laughs> So those were all of my recent five star reads. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!